Barry McGee was a totally different artist to the ones that I have shown previously. And that's what's so refreshing about this project. As I said now, I think several times, I didn't follow a strict curatorial path. What I wanted to do is bring to Australia what I considered the latest, the most interesting developments in contemporary art. And I wanted to bring the artists. I didn't really want to bring exhibitions. If you bring an exhibition, it's the finished work, just a question of how you install it. But if you bring an artist to produce in Australia, then the work is really grounded in Australia. And if it's shown internationally or referred internationally, it's always said, first produced in Sydney or Melbourne, so it's locked into an Australian context. I travelled a lot in those days to New York, to Europe, and I kept in touch with artists and with gallery friends. And Jeffrey Deitch, who was very active in those days, more as a curator than as a gallerist, had a big space in Soho, and he showed all really experimental artists. He introduced me to the work of Barry McGee. Barry was a street artist, a graffiti artist, but a very talented one. He worked under the street name of Twist, and he had a worldwide following, painting, building, trains, whatever graffiti artists do. He met his wife-to-be, who was a trained artist, and she encouraged him to go to art school to become, if you like, a professional artist. And he straddled both worlds. He had several exhibitions, both in America and in Europe, and the Prada Foundation in Milan did a big exhibition of his work, which fortunately I managed to see. And I thought that would be something really interesting to bring to Australia. So Barry was very happy. He agreed to come to Australia, and we were looking for a site both in Sydney and Melbourne. And fortunately, in Melbourne, the old meat markets were being renovated for a cultural space by the city. And when I showed that to Barry, he was really taken. It's a bit ironic, as Barry is a vegan, to have his project in a meat market, but he didn't object to the fact. What I also love about projects is the producing side of it. That's where the real creative thing is. Once it's done, well, it's up to the public. It's out in the open, it's gone. But to put a project together, to be part of that, I find the most satisfying. And with Barry, we really started from the beginning. We went out to some used car yards, and he bought a number of broken down old trucks and a old shipping container. And in the middle of the meat markets, he put the shipping container, and on top, as a pyramid, he piled one truck on top of the other. It's easy to say, just piling trucks up, but you needed several cranes, and you needed to anchor them. As in our enthusiasm, it went very well and very quickly, but we were near the top of the pyramid, and one of the trucks started to slip. And we were very fortunate that nobody got hurt. So from then on, we backed up and we really anchored each of the trucks so they wouldn't go anywhere. And the trucks were all empty, but he had videos playing in some of them. In some of them, he installed an electric engine, so it seemed like one of the wheels was running. On top, there was a leg sticking out that 
moved around in circles. So that was the centerpiece. Then he did the same stack with old videos where he put a video work in. He bought some finished works from the United States. He picked up discarded alcohol bottles and he painted heads on them, very exaggerated heads, and he hung them in clusters in the space. All along the walls, we painted and attached mosaic squares that were painted in bright colors. So it became one really vibrant space. Barry is a lovely guy, but not the easiest person to work with. He had a great following as a graffiti artist, which I didn't realize. He was well known in Melbourne. And he was a world-class skater and surfer. And his mates used to pick him up at six in the morning to go surfing. And the surf beaches in Melbourne are not close as in Sydney. And we had press conferences, we had meetings to which he turned up a couple of hours late. But all was forgiven because he was very charming. He came out with an assistant and his little daughter and a nanny, as unfortunately his wife got breast cancer and died very young. I suspect that at night they went out and painted graffitis all over Melbourne to keep their hands in in the street art. His assistant fell from somewhere and had to be taken to hospital as he broke his ankle. Just one of the tribulations of working with artists. What I loved about the project, it combined the energy of the street with a discipline, what he picked up in art school, in composition and in bringing a big project together. It was very well received in Melbourne. It's something which I would have loved to bring to Sydney, but it was quite complex. Barry also, on the request of the NGV, painted a mural on the glass wall of the NGV, and it stayed there for quite a while. So he invaded the hallowed spaces of a, of a museum to show his art which originated on the street. Mm -hmm.